In other words, I'd never get one. Yet, I in all actuality do comprehend the reason why individuals would get one, and what they like about them, and that they're not disappearing at any point in the near future. So we are right here, with the, as far as I might be concerned, at any rate, puzzling GWM, Hoval H6GT, the Roadster-style take on the customary H6 SUV. Be that as it may, this one is different to some other SUV Roadsters I've tried, in light of the fact that it has a shockingly open secondary lounge with regards to headroom. Furthermore, from certain points, I figure it's very attractive. The 2023 GWM Hoval H6 GT Ultra AWD is the reach-beating grade in a lineup of two, evaluated from $46,990 drive away. As you'll find in the segment underneath, you get substantially more than simply all-wheel drive for your additional cash, and the Ultra Grade truly satisfies the brand's commitment of offering a pile of pack for not much money. Credit to GWM Hoval, costs haven't moved since the vehicle sent off in Australia in mid-2022, while numerous different SUVs have seen costs increment by a couple percent. Note as well, those costs are drive away broadly, and the exceptional paint cost is generally unassuming at $495 for pastel dim, seen here, sapphire blue, burgundy red, Atlantis blue or brilliant dark. Just Hamilton white is accessible at $0. With respect to rivals, there aren't numerous at this sort of cash, and at this size. The clearest elective is the Renault Arcana, which is a roadster-styled SUV a size more modest, and it begins at a lower cost, as well, from $37,500. It doesn't have close to as much snort or tech, and it's front-wheel drive just, as well. The other choice, for the people who will spend somewhat more, would be the Audi Q3 Sportback, from $54,100, and that will not get you a SUV as huge or strong as this, yet it will get you an Audi. 2023 GWM Hoval H6 GT Estimating GWM Hoval H6 GT Lux 2 WD, $40,990 drive away GWM Hoval H6 GT Ultra AWD, $46,490 drive away The inside of the GT truly stands apart as an extraordinary and energetic spot to sit, also a cutting-edge zone, especially in the AWD model. That is on the grounds that the Ultra gets a greater 12.3-inch touchscreen media framework that looks like it in this lodge, and there's a completely computerized instrument group, 10.25-inch, which is similarly brilliant, fresh and eye-catching. For the cash, there's a ton of scene quality and truly rich completions in the lodge. There's a microsuede finish on the seats, entryways and armrests, and it truly is a wonderful surface. There's likewise a decent looking checked, carbon motivated finish on the mid control area and the dashboard, and everything integrates pleasantly. The seats offer a brilliant completion as far as the material utilized, and the GT weaving is a fascinating touch, however the customizability of the driver's seat isn't great. I continued onward back the electric switches attempting to get the seat a little lower and at a more pleasant point, it didn't work, regardless of how frequently I attempted. One thing I've found with GWM Hoval items for the most part is the controlling wheel is a piece hard. What I mean is, in the event that you go through hours grasping the wheel, you could wind up with sore hands, as it has somewhat of a harder edge to the edge than most different wheels. The convenience of the media framework is one more bogeyman of mine. You're expected to do a great deal of work through the media screen, and it very well may be tedious. For instance, in most different vehicles in the event that you need the seat warmers on, there's a button. Yet, in this vehicle, you need to go through a few menus, vehicle, seat, and afterward change the warming or potentially ventilation, which is diverting assuming you're attempting to do that progressing, I would encourage you to do it when you're not moving. 
A ton of the controls resemble that in this vehicle, covered in menus upon menus, and keeping in mind that there is a ton of usefulness to it, it isn't as easy to use as possible or ought to be. Indeed, there's a different line of buttons to turn on the AC or demister, and you can involve that as an easy route to get into the environment controls, yet it's not really brilliant, all things considered. So you get my point, the screen isn't perfect. Yet, there is very great capacity on offer in the front seat region, with a couple of cup holders between the seats, a remote telephone charger plate before the shifter, a covered mid-control area canister, in addition to an enormous stockpiling plate under the span-style console region between the seats, which is likewise where you find two USB ports for charging slash media. Further, there are entryway pockets with bottle holders and a smallish glove box too. What's astounding about this Roadster SUV, is that the secondary lounge headroom is liberal. A lot of such models are truly just reasonable for little tenants or children in the subsequent line, yet the H6 GT offers an obliging space for grown-ups the same. That is on the grounds that rather than the roadster piece of the rooftop beginning at the B point of support, between the front and back entryways, it really begins at the C point of support, behind where the back entryways close. That implies it has extensively more headroom than it could somehow have been supplied with, and it's an appropriately reasonable family choice therefore. In addition to the fact that there is great headroom, there's likewise adequate leg and foot space, and enough width across the back seat to permit three grown-ups to sit next to each other, as well. Furthermore, dissimilar to a lot of different vehicles in this fragment, the secondary lounge is really comfortable, it has a lot of springiness to it, meaning you sit in it, not on it. There are double isofix and three top tie focuses for kid seat fitment as well, and the back tenants have directional air vents and a couple of USB ports. There are bottle holders in the entryways, a crease down armrest with cup holders, and several guide pockets on the seat backs too. Boot space, be that as it may, is limited contrasted and the normal H6. The GT is said to have 392 liters of freight limit, meaning the boot is around 208 liters less, or 53%, than the H6 SUV. You can in any case fit a pram and a couple of shopping sacks toward the back, or seven days of baggage for a couple, yet it's not the most common sense vehicle on the off chance that you will generally stack a great deal into the storage compartment. There is a space saver spare wheel under the boot floor. The H6 GT is accessible exclusively with a 2.0 liter turbocharged four chamber petroleum motor creating 150 kilowatts of force. 6,000 to 6,300 revolutions per minute, and 320 newton meters of force, 1,500 to 4,000 revolutions per minute. While those results appear to be a little moderate as the vehicle weighs somewhere in the range of 1,570 and 1,680 kilograms, it feels significantly perkier than those results propose. The motor is mated to a 7-speed, double-grip programmed transmission, and as you most likely seen, there's front-wheel drive for the Lux or all-wheel drive for the Ultra. Towing limit is 750 kg unbraked and 2000 kg braked. It could do for certain enhancements in a couple of key ways. The 2.0-litre motor feels like it has sufficient snort for everyday driving obligations, and assuming you leave it in typical mode, it is surely satisfactory regarding snort. There is a race mode to receive more in return, and it truly hones everything up and makes the motor and transmission reaction significantly more fast, as well as opening up the exhaust to consider some popping and snapping, as well. That is a cycle of a chuckle, sure, however it never truly reached a place where I felt like I was having a good time driving this vehicle, regardless of whether it tends to be quick in an orderly fashion and dramatic while getting it done. The double-grip programmed transmission isn't quite so smooth as a comparable gearbox in a VW or Audi, and can battle in metropolitan driving, slacking from a halt and, surprisingly, every so often shivering as you create some distance from a stop. Then in different examples it will take off excessively fast, which makes it hard to pass judgment and leaves you rethinking what will occur straight away. 
assuming it was delayed to answer constantly, it'd be okay, however the not knowing makes it hard to live with. Its everyday drivability is additionally hampered by the stuff selector, it's a rotational dial shifter, however dissimilar to a large portion of that breed the H6's one doesn't have a plug on it, so you will wind up whirling it and not exactly realizing which stuff you're in until you peer down to find out. It could sound minor, yet attempt a 5 point turn on a tight road in a rush, and you'll understand how irritating this can be. All things considered, the leaving camera framework is magnificent in those circumstances, since it has amazing lucidity from both the back, front, side and hierarchical perspectives, and there's an artificial intelligence style realistic portrayal of the vehicle in its area assuming you need that, as well. Nonetheless, what is disappointing is the camera framework will continually turn on when you're at lower speeds, regardless of whether you're demonstrating, and that can be drawn out particularly in the event that you're paying attention to a tune or web recording and need to skip something, or simply need to check where you're going on the screen assuming you're utilizing maps. The H6 GT's ride solace is very great thinking of it as riding 19-inch wheels, however the dealing with could be better since it doesn't be guaranteed to sit excessively level in corners, and nor does it feel as secure as it could when you toss it around a little. Further, the directing is to some degree conflicting in its sensitivity, feeling strangely weighted now and again. You can essentially become accustomed to that, however it likewise has an enormous turning circle at 12.0 meters. All in all, in the event that you're moving forward from a 10-year-old Captiva or Foreigner, this will feel like the best vehicle you've at any point driven. In any case, I've driven each rival in this section, and it's off by a long shot to the cream of the crop. Of course. Very much like the remainder of the H6 lineup, GT forms have the most extreme 5-star ANCAP security rating in view of 2022 tests. It scored 90% for grown-up tenant insurance, 88% for youngster inhabitant assurance, 73% for weak street client security and 81% for well-being help. The GWM Hoval range wears a 7-year, limitless kilometer guarantee, which is about all that you can get without perusing the fine print. There's a 5-year emergency aids program included from by 2, and 5 years of covered cost overhauling. The assistance spans are a year slash 10,000 kilometers for the main visit, then consistently or 15,000 kilometers from there on. The expenses are fair, at $1,550 for a long time for the 2WD, a normal of $310 per administration, or $1,780 for quite some time for the AWD, $356 normal per annum. With respect to fuel utilization, the Lux 2WD has an authority joined cycle fuel use figure of 7.5 liters per 100 kilometers, while the Ultra AWD claims 8.4 liters slash 100 kilometers. Across my time trying out the AWD model, I saw an arrival of 10.0 liters slash 100 kilometers across a blend of metropolitan, throughway and turnpike driving. You can top it off with 91 Romanian lay normal unleaded assuming that you wish, however I'd propose running it on premium unleaded. The gas tank limit is 61 liters for the forward model and 60 liters for the AWD. The GWM Hoval H6 GT feels practically like an incomplete task. It has the unresolved issues something pretty great, Yet for the individuals who pine for a lively looking SUV that is likewise energetic to drive, this probably won't stir things up around town. With some calibrating, it very well may be an extraordinary choice for those purchasers. What's more, for certain purchasers, the drive experience may not demonstrate a deal-breaker.